Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to a very, very special Exchange Games Live. Who knew that I come out during the day as well? So I appreciate you guys all being here. We have a very, very special guest with us today. We have Staff Sergeant Cody Mackle. He's the Department of the Army Boss Representative, Boss President. Staff Sergeant Mackle, how are you doing, man? I'm good, Mark. How are you? Fantastic, brother. So we've had a little bit of time to get to know each other over the last hour, and I've, I've enjoyed it and got to know you. You've impressed me so much. But so tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me a little bit about your career and what got you to where you're at right now. So my name, uh, for those joining in, my name is Staff Sergeant Mackel. I'm the Department of the Army boss representative uh, stationed at a joint base in San Antonio, Texas. I've been in the Army for just over 11 years now. Uh, I'm an infantry guy by trade, um, but currently I serve as the Department of the Army's boss representative. So what we do here at headquarters, oversee the boss program, providing support to the single soldiers out there on in the installation. Uh, I do work with our civilian counterparts here at MWR headquarters, and it's most definitely been a humbling experience working with some of the folks that we have up here. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's such a pleasure to have you here today. And we're going to talk about a bunch of different topics. We're going to get into boss. We're going to get into MWR, but, and we're also going to talk about uh, MWR's, MWR sponsored soldier showdown Four. I've been pitching it for the last couple of weeks on uh, exchange games live, which uh, airs Tuesday nights at seven o'clock. So um, <laughs> seven central time. Uh, so be sure to tune into that. So tell me what, let's just start with MWR. What's, what's new in MWR and what's going on? What is your role with MWR? So within MWR, so I sit up in what we call G9 uh, here at headquarters, which is uh, our Family Morale, Welfare, and Recreation Division. And within MWR, for the most part, I solely focus on BOSS, but I do help promote a lot of the other programs we have up here at the headquarters, whether it's uh, you know Soldier Showdown, which is powered by USAA within Army Entertainment, uh, Outdoor Rec Program, Sports and Fitness, uh, what's unique about my position is I am an advocate for all of the events that we do here within MWR, and I have a reach of about 64 garrisons across the Army. That's incredible. That's incredible. So I want to remind everybody that is in the chat, if you have any questions uh, for Staff Sergeant Mackle, rather regarding, you know, his career, MWR, boss, or soldier, show, or soldier Showdown 4, please type them up in the comments. We'll get them answered for you. Um, so you've had quite a career and you were also, you're, you're a drill sergeant, correct? Or you used to be a drill sergeant, right? I actually was. So before I came up here, uh, to, uh, Fort Sam, I was at Fort Jackson. I was a drill sergeant for two and a half years. Uh, I wouldn't honestly be surprised if some of my old trainees are actually watching me right now being like, Oh, Hey, I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they're, I bet they're still a little scared though. They're, they're, they're probably not going to, they're probably not going to come back at you and have any, uh, any critiques for you after this interview, for sure. It's, uh, it's gonna be, they're going to tell you fantastic job, sorry. Fantastic job. <laughs> I don't know. It was a little awkward. I was traveling with the uh, MCOM SAR major a few months ago. We're walking through the airport and he's sitting next to me. And from behind us, all you hear in a death wrenching scream is, Drill Sergeant Mackel, is that you? And I turn around and I see a, <laughs> one of my old trainees running at me. I'm just like, SAR major, I don't know this person. Don't know them at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. I bet like, because, you know, me, I was never a drill sergeant, but me as being just like a recruit, right? So like, the, my drill sergeants are their faces are ingrained in my memory but like you know for drill sergeants you got to see you know two three hundred kids a, you know a cycle you know it's just they're just faces to you guys but like to us mm -hmm. you're just like these like all inspiring kind of drill sergeants like mythical creatures or whatever so you guys you guys stay in our uh, in our minds for a very long time long after we graduate I will say it, it is very humbling. I know uh, when I graduated ALC out of Fort Benning a couple of years ago, uh, my drill sergeant was a first sergeant down there and he just happened to show up. And I never thought that like somebody like that, like you just said, you know, we've seen 260 kids flow through every nine weeks. And for him to come up to me after ALC and be like, you know, I remember when you went through and for him to tell me some of the things he thought about me when I was a trainee, he was, he was really proud to see the progress I made over what was a seven year time period. And, and that was a very humbling experience for me. That's awesome. That's awesome. 
I, I know. And so you're also a gamer as well, like a pretty avid gamer. I mean, casual, uh, probably a lot like me, kind of a avid casual gamer. Like I'm a hardcore casual gamer, I think is the way I would describe myself. I'm not good at anything, but I like to play everything. Um, so and being in the military, I know that um, my career and video games were kind of intertwined. Like they kind of, they always found themselves kind of in the same room together, whether it was we were home playing video games, you know, as a squad, building that camaraderie amongst ourselves, or we were downrange deployed. Um, what has been your experience with gaming in the military? So you kind of really just hit that nail on the head. And uh, you used the key word that I really like to use is building members of the squad. Uh, when I was a team leader at Fort Campbell, the easiest way for me to get to know my team members was after work when we would play at the time, um, we played, oh, what was the name? A uh, battlefield, the new battlefield just came out. And I felt like every single night, all five of us, we were up on battlefield, you know, running through online play, just really getting, I think that's where I learned the most about my Joes at the time was playing with them in the evening. And it was, it was a, a new way, I guess, especially with a generational change to learn about the people you work with. Right. I know I've told this story before on, on Exchange Games Live, but my very first deployment, we showed up and we were at um, LSA Anaconda, which was Balad in Iraq. And we had this uh, kind of this media information center and it had a conference room. And in that conference room, there was this old, dusty um plasma screen tv that had like burn ends on it it was just a not not a very good but you know we had an xbox and so me and my buddy we set up an xbox we started playing halo i believe it was halo 2 um so we were playing halo 2 every night and then you know it was and then other soldiers from other units would come in and out of the of the media operations center and they would see that we had this set up and then they brought an old crusty tv over with their um, with their Xbox. Now we had two TVs going, you know, we were playing like 18 multiplayer, still doing the shared screen thing. And then over time and over the course of the, the deployment, it got to the point where we were having five, six, seven, eight TVs in this conference room, all, all hooked up together, begging the IT guys for crossover cables and routers and all the stuff we needed to have these LAN parties. But it was this time that we could come in after patrols and all come together and, and, and play a game and just, and really inspire that camaraderie amongst not not just the soldiers in my unit, but like soldiers are, that were all around because we're all looking for that kind of entertainment and that kind of release at the end of the day. So um, now I want to get into talking about Soldier Showdown 4. Can you give me a rundown of what it is? I've done the best that I can over the last two weeks of uh, explaining it to folks uh, on Exchange Games Live, but I want to hear straight from your mouth what Soldier Showdown 4 is and how it can, how, how fun it can be and, and what people have to uh, gain from it. So Soldier Showdown 4, it's a tournament that we host here uh, with our partners. So Soldier Showdown 4, which is powered by USAA, it's a combination of you guys there at uh, the exchange. We also work with Complexity, who's really a big driving force behind it. And what we do is we bring a weekly game series. Like right now, we're running through a four-week Halo tournament. And at the end of each week, so like this weekend, it'll be a 1v1 tournament. Uh, those prizes for whoever wins this week, they'll win a hundred dollar gift card as well as a whole bunch of other things that they have going on. But what's nice is at the end of each game tournament, whoever has the most points will win. What is that game title prize? And those game titles or all your points throughout the week will earn up to you, um, potentially winning the grand prize and at the end of what it'll be our 20 week five game title tournament will be a very unique experience for whoever gets into play. That's awesome. And what are the, what are, what are all the games that you guys are playing? So we are wrapping up our halo series this week. Our next game title we'll jump into is Madden. Uh, the other ones include rocket league, apex, call of duty, Warzone. Uh, after Madden. Okay, cool. Yep, now we were talking a little bit beforehand um, about uh, Apex a little bit, and you're a big Apex player. Uh, so here's what I want. I want you to sell me a guy who's never played Apex. I want you to sell me on Apex, like 30 second pitch. 
30 second pitch on apex so am i shooting it to you at, from an army standpoint or am i shooting it to you from a non-army standpoint well let not not army standpoint army standpoint 100 percent all right, so Mark, I'm going to act like your two team members from my or your three team members from my squad who have been not quite getting along. Uh, what's unique about the new series of Apex that really builds team camaraderie and it would help them come together as a member of a squad. So my pitch to you is going to be this. So Apex is just like PUBG. So what it does is it creates that team bonding effect to where you guys get in. And yes, it is still a race to the finish for, you know, who can get the most kills, who ends up at the end. But what it does, it helps you bring out your teamwork because you do have to work as a team. You can't just walk into Apex and win a game solo. You need a, you need a good team member, uh, whether that's one or two, to make it all the way to the end. Okay. Okay. You got me. You got me. I'll give it a go. It's free to play, right? And then free to play game? It, it is. So it is free. You can download it from your whatever console you play. I'm an Xbox player. Um, so... You know, if you hear me boost them up a little bit, don't judge. But uh, you can download it free from the store or the console you play in. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now, if uh, somebody is out there and they want to register uh, for Soldier Showdown 4, what is the process in that? So to get registered for Soldier Showdown 4, it's honestly super simple. So uh, I'm pretty sure some of my friends are in the chat helping me out here. So all they have to do is visit armymwr.com slash esports, and it will take them to the page within MWR that will link them to all the set uh, instructions. What's nice is this week, if you get uh, joined in for this week, you have the opportunity to get streamed live on our Twitch. So we uh, stream every about four weeks, we do a live stream that goes up on our Twitch. And this week happens to be the week. So if you are interested, I highly recommend you click on the link that I believe was just dropped into the chat and get signed up for this weekend it's 1v1 so you don't need a teammate this weekend uh just get out there you know most of you if you're over the age of 25 you've been training for halo your whole life this is your moment to shine uh, i know mark i got to see you do that last night congrats on a couple of those dubs you got so uh, i highly encourage that you guys get online uh, click the link that's in the chat and get signed up for soldier showdown this weekend you know i would you know, I would sign up, but um, what is the eligibility requirement on this? So in order to be eligible to play in Soldier Showdown 4, you must be uh, an active duty reserve or guard member stationed on an army installation. So that doesn't mean, though, that uh, so like somebody for me, for instance, I'm an army person. Uh, I'm eligible to play. But if I am, uh, let's take like Joint Base Lewis McCord, for instance, of Washington State, that's uh, got Air Force on it as well. As long as it's an Army-led installation, everybody is welcome to join. Uh, like, I think this last weekend, we actually had an Air Force member out of, I want to say it was Camp Humphreys, uh, win on the 3v3 tournament This had happened this past weekend. Now, you say it's an online tournament, correct? So what is, after they register, what is the process of actually entering um, into a game and entering into the tournament? Is there a lobby system or... So we have our own group Discord. So uh, once they get registered, they'll get invited into the Discord. And in there, we have, uh, think of Discord kind of like Microsoft Teams or an old AOL chat room where there's different channels. They'll go into what is their time zone and they'll get uh, instructions on how to join the bracket for that weekend. We build brackets with our partners over at Complexity and Liquid Dog. Okay, that's awesome. It sounds like it's really, really well organized, um, which I've, I've gone to the website and I've uh, I perused it and looked at like the registering and it seems like it's very well organized. So um, that website to register, uh, we're going to have links in the comments uh, and in the description below, um, but that is uh, armymwr.com slash esports, correct? It is. And I believe that uh, it is dropped in the chat now too. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So now I want to get into we're, we're, we'll, we'll mention all this stuff and we'll uh, we'll kind of curtail around. Um, and we'll circle back to this uh, before we uh, before we end off today. But I want to talk about boss a little bit. Um, when we were doing our pre interview a little bit, I told you about my experience with boss. And when I joined the army in 2004, um, boss was just getting up off the ground. And it was kind of a, a um, it, was, it was a very small organization. Um, and then I look back and I've seen 
um, some of these boss facilities that you guys have now and and how 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 massive i mean you guys have a seat at the table now i mean that is that is insane to me almost in line with what what i consider like an frg group or something like commanders and things take you guys and 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 you guys have a voice and that's amazing to me so if you could just speak a little bit about what boss is now compared to what it was when i joined so I don't want to say that boss has changed since you joined because boss has always been in the background since we were to, we came to tuition in 1989. Uh, I think there's just a larger emphasis on it now, especially with, you know, everything going on in the world between the, the food uh, issues we have within the army, as well as mental health. Uh, boss is really a driving force that can help uh, our presidents that are there on the garrison teach those single soldiers about the resources at hand without them having to go to, you know, uh, their first sergeant, their commander to say, Hey, you know, what resources are available to me? I know when, you know, way back when, when I had to, uh, deal with some mental health I had going on, I was scared to tell it to my team leader at the time, because, you know, I knew if I brought it up, my career was probably going to be over And the, uh, boss president at the time at JBLM, was a key factor in teaching me about other resources. There was, you know, military life counselors, there was army one source, there was all those other resources that I could still get the help I needed that I probably wouldn't have learned if boss didn't help bring some of that stuff to tuition. That's amazing. That's amazing to, to, to hear that, you know, especially, you know, you have a drill sergeant background. And so you, of all people, realize the importance of, uh, of, of mental health in, in certain situations and, and how draining the military can be. I know the trail of being a drill sergeant is, is very, very stressful. Uh, one of my closest friends uh, was a drill sergeant. So I, I, I'm aware of what that life and what that, what that ask of you. And, you know, in every job in the military, I think, asks um, a lot of every individual. And I think it's, it's a different kind of mindset that, you know, a lot of people um, don't understand that aren't actually in it. So it's cool that bosses kind of come in and now is a uh, kind of a driving force in that. And that's awesome to hear. Um, I know, as you know, I said, I, I, I'd like to think of myself as being like one generation removed from you. So um, it's amazing to see that you guys have um, have that kind of thing. Now, for people who aren't aware, because I've I've seen them um, around, but can you explain to me some of these like crazy boss facilities you guys have on some of these installations? That's it's it blows my mind. So it, it's kind of nice. So if you're somewhere like Joint Base Lewis McCord, uh, boss is located in what side? So in the Army within MWR, we have what we call warrior zones. And they are massive uh, facilities that are really designed. It's uh, a place where the soldiers can go to relax. Uh, I'll use JBLMs, for instance. They have a facility that inside there's pool tables. There's a small little cafe with uh, food and uh, some other stuff. There's Xboxes in there. There's Playstations. There's a small movie theater. There's, you know, web surfing computers for you to do, uh, you know, correspondence courses, uh, mandatory training, all the, you know, the military related stuff, but they also have gaming computers inside of there. Uh, and it's just really a spot where these soldiers can go and, you know, not be in the barracks, hang out with, uh, you know, somebody within their squad, or, you know, if you're friends in a unit, you can go, Hey, let's go meet up at, you know, the boss lounge, the boss house, the warrior zone, so on and so forth, and really get the opportunity to hang out with folks, not in a, as most of us know, five by five barracks room. That's awesome. That's awesome. I would love to come down one day and tour one of those uh, boss facilities with you. I think that would just be so much fun. Uh, I, like I said, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an old fogey. Um, and like I said, I've been removed from, from the military for, for quite some time, but every time I find myself on an installation around soldiers, man, I, I there's just nothing like it. And I know you're young and you're around them all the time and uh, they may annoy you half the time, but I'm telling you one day, one day you're going to miss them. You're going to miss them. I know. I shouldn't have told you that earlier that it was a love-hate relationship with being a drill sergeant. But I will say that, you know, just like you said, looking back on it now, being a drill sergeant is probably one of the greatest things that I've done with my career. Um, but on top of that, it's also being within the boss program. It has helped me learn so much, not only about myself, but about how to become a better leader. Uh, I was an E4 writing con ops, something that you don't do until you hit, you know, E6. Um, 
I was as an E3, E4 standing in front of a two-star general briefing about a boss event that was going on. And I know a handful of E3s and E4s that'll stand up in front of a general and a SAR major and say, hey, this is what I want to do this weekend. And, yep. you know, you very humbling when you have to get told no. So One, it's, it's been an experience. 100%. Um, so with that, well, like I said, we want to circle back to some things. I want to ask you some rapid fire questions. Just no right or wrong answer. I've just written a few down. And I just want to see if me and you, I want to see if me and you can be friends. That's what this is all about. Uh -oh. I want to see if me and you can be friends. All right. Do, so, I, do first, I have a phone a friend option? You do not. You do not. <laughs> all right. First, first question. Favorite game of all time. Favorite game of all time. Don't judge. Animal Crossing. <sighs> second, <Yep>. second question. <laughs> second question. First game you ever remember playing. 007 golden eye okay you're back you're back <laughs> you're back you're back in my good graces okay the last game you 100 completed Ooh, 100 completed just cause four i completed it yesterday just cause yeah that's a good one that's a good one all right uh, we just had all the big showcases from Sony and PlayStation, Nintendo, because they didn't have an E3 this year. But I don't know if you watched any of them. But do you have a most anticipated game? It might be 10 years out, but a game that you're just looking forward to that's not out right now. My nerd side is so about to come out. But the Harry Potter game that is launching this fall, super excited for. You're losing no points with me on that one. <laughs> that's that's a fantastic choice I, I i was really excited when i saw the starfield but like harry potter that's a good one that's a good one, a good one. scariest game you ever played Ooh. Ooh. i forget the name of it uh dark matter dark dark space is i think what it's called dead space dead space okay, okay. I played it while deployed with a surround sound system in a dark room. Okay. That's a good one. That's a good one. I like that. I, I My scariest game was Silent Hill 2. You're probably too young yeah. for that, but Silent Hill 2 was... I just anyone, feel like that's anyone old, who like, knows about that. Yes, one day. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a cat in the locker. Anyone who knows, they know. <laughs> okay, your first console you ever owned. First console I ever owned was a GameCube. Oh my God, I'm so old. I'm so I know. Old. Oh my gosh. I was an adult when I bought a GameCube. <laughs> well, I mean, growing up, that was the first console I personally bought. So like growing up, I had a PlayStation, but I didn't quite count it as my own because I had to mm -hmm. share it with my siblings. Mm -hmm. So GameCube was the first one I kind of considered my own. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair. The longest gaming session you've ever had. Counted in hours or days. <laughs> Ooh. That would be, I know you and I talked about this early and it makes sense when I say it, it's probably destiny. I think I got on one day very early at a time. I don't like to, I think I got on before what we know as PT started. And I think I got off after PT was done the next day. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good session. That's a good session. I, I was telling you that I played destiny the first one. I didn't play destiny too, but I played destiny and I put like 700 hours into that game. It was, it was insane. I know me and my, I was telling you about, um, uh, my drill sergeant friend and we play, we played borderlands one for like two and a half days straight. Like we just, oh my I mean, there might've been some naps or something involved, but we didn't leave the couch. It was, it was not healthy at all. <laughs> all right. Console or PC? So if you would have talked to me a month ago, I would have been 100% console. But uh, recently I've started playing on PC. So I still prefer console, but PC is starting to gain a little more respect. I hear you. I hear you. All right. This is the last question. This might possibly be um, the most important question. I, I'm an RPG guy. 
that's kind of where my bread and butter is. I love the Soul series. I love Skyrim. I love JRPGs, all that stuff. I love Diablo. That is where my bread and butter is. Okay. Uh, I don't have the Twitch. I don't have the, I don't have that in me anymore. The, the, the little Twitch reactions that, you know, you need for the Call of Duties and stuff. I still enjoy them, mm-hmm. but I'm an RPG guy through and through. So what class best describes you as a person? So I'll give you some choices. A rogue, a mage, a barbarian, a druid, or a paladin? You're most definitely talking Skyrim, aren't you? (laughs) (laughs) I feel like you're talking Skyrim or World of Warcraft. Yeah, I mean, there's a little of all of them in there. (laughs) I took one out specifically because it was too easy. If I would have given you a warrior class, (laughs) if I would have given you warrior as a class, so I had to take that one out. What were my options again? Okay. Rogue, a mage, a barbarian, a druid, or a paladin? I'd probably have to go with a barbarian, honestly. Being you can't allow me to be a warrior or a hunter, I would also probably identify as a hunter. I like doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes. So. Yep. Those are I'll, all I'll good answers. I can't go down the Animal Crossing route with you. That was the only one that I just have to. I, I wish I wouldn't have led with that one. I hey. led with. I led, and your first answer was Animal Crossing. It's a great game. I just. I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> it just reminds me of. It reminds me of The Sims, and I know my mom was like super big into that while I was growing up. So that's probably why it's up there. Um, but if it makes you feel better. Mario Kart is most definitely a very, very, very close second. Okay. That's a fair. I know you and I had a good conversation about that one earlier. So I was a public affairs guy and uh, I love all things Mario. And when I was a journalist and we wrote for the uh, Anaconda Times, I did my first video game review on um, Mario Galaxy 2. And I did a Mario Kart review. I think it was seven. I think it was seven. I think it was Mario Kart 7 that I did a review on. So that was, that was always fun. So real quick, I just want to circle back and just talk about Soldier Showdown 4. If uh, anyone is out there that is eligible and wants to register for Soldier Showdown 4, brought to you by MWR and powered by USAA, they can register at armymwr.com slash esports. Is that right? That is right. And Mark, I got a a good updated list of all the prizes that they have the opportunity to win. So for those weekly games, there is uh, your opportunity at a $100 Amazon gift card, a $50 Xbox or PlayStation gift card, monitors, headsets, gaming controllers, keyboards, webcams. That's just your weekly prizes. So then for your uh, grand prize, there's uh, first, second, and third place. So I'm only going to go over first place. So first place is a $500 Visa gift card, a gaming laptop, and an ultra-wide curved monitor. So there's most definitely, I know, Mark, I can see your face when I said that. And I'm (laughs) I'm kind of happy everybody else couldn't see that. But there's some absolutely outstanding prizes for this series. So if you have the opportunity, I would highly suggest, especially if you're eligible, get online, uh, register. The link is in the chat. Um, or you can visit, I think uh, Mark also said it's going to be in the description. But Mark, I have a question for you because somebody put it in the chat. And I want to know what your favorite game is. <sighs> hey, this is my show. This is my show. <laughs> Okay. You don't go on Letterman and ask him questions. That's not how this works. So I have, so in the chat, in the chat, I'm not going to say who asked it, but they said, tell them what your favorite game is, Mark. And then there's three laughing, crying emojis. Okay. Well, that is the girlfriend. And, um, (laughs) we're going to have a talk later, uh, right now, my favorite game, and you've probably never heard of it is super auto pets on my phone. It's an auto battler. It's super auto pets. I don't feel bad. I, I, it doesn't affect anyone. I play it on my own time. So it's super hey. auto pets and also Elden Ring or any of the Souls you're... games. I'm a big Souls fan. All of them. It's not just Elden Ring. I love Dark Souls 1, 2, Demon Souls, Bloodborne, all those, all those like self-hating games. I love them all. So that would be my favorite. Indeed. Yes. Yeah, I know you did. You... 
You did sell me on the Elden Ring earlier. Elden Ring is it's one of the it's one of the greats, man. It's just it's it's a, I'm not gonna say it's a perfect game, but it is very very close. It's very difficult, and uh, like I said, but it, it pays off in the end. So, well, Sergeant, thank you so much for being here. I had a blast. This is a great conversation. Um, thank you so much. And before I leave, do you have any? I, and this is my last little story that I'll tell. When I was out, when I was in the army, I was deployed, and I was at, and they sent me to this little far off fob in the middle of nowhere desert. I mean, it was just a building, had probably a platoon sized group of guys there. And I was just there to cover the story. It was supposed to be like a two or three day mission. It ended up being like a two and a half week mission. And I was not prepared. And about a week in, they opened the gates and this truck backed in. And this truck backed in and they, 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 they opened it up and it was just full of like, all the lickies and chewies, you know what I'm talking about? Like your Snickers bars and your Reese's cups and your, you know, Doritos and all that stuff. And I was just amazed that, you know, the exchange from wherever, I don't even know where that truck came from, but the exchange came and pulled that truck in and opened it up. And then we had all this stuff because we were down to, you know, we were just eating MREs, which is fine for a time, but you know, you give me a Snickers bar. So do you have like a cool, like exchange story, whether it be downrange or, or, or stateside? So I know when I start talking about this, you'll probably even be able to relate. So same thing when I was deployed, um, I was a college student. And while I was deployed, my computer died on me. So I had to go to the exchange and get a new one. So I was at Fob Warrior, I believe at the time in Afghanistan. And I walk in and the lady's like, you know, how can we help you? I was like, oh, you know, I need a new laptop. My laptop just died. I'm in school. Like, I need something that will help. I swear still to this day that that lady part-time worked for Apple because she sold me on what was the most expensive Apple laptop that was in that 10 by probably 20 uh, Connex. Um, But then to make it even better is when I paid, she handed me a handful and and change of these, these little circled discs and you, you, I see your face, so I know you know where this is going, of pogs that are changed for while you're deployed. And I was like, what am I going to do with these? She's like, oh, you know, you can use them at any of your local exchange stores. So I was like, okay. Uh, so I took them home. I threw them in my tough box. I moved here to San Antonio, and I opened a tough box that I hadn't opened since deployment. And I found about $100 in pogs that I took to our local APs and I tried the same thing. I tried to buy a candy bar with them and the, the lady inside, she's like, uh, what are these? I was like, I was told I can use these at any AP store. And she had to call over a manager cause she had no idea what they were. They're rare breed. They're rare breed. <laughs> that's awesome. A hundred dollars in pogs, man. That's crazy. Yeah, it was, it was something else. What a great story. So before we wrap up, is there anything that we left out about Soldier Showdown 4, Boss, or MWR, or just you as a person? Is there anything we need, to, we need to touch on that we didn't? So for those that are on and watching, uh, if I could recommend anything for, for those that are watching, it's, you know, us up here at headquarters, we have constant conversations with uh, Sergeant Major of the Army Grinston. I talk to him about once every three months, and he's very involved with a lot of the stuff we're doing, not only just within Boss, but within MWR as a whole. A lot of our initiatives do support his winning matters and his this is my squad initiatives. Um, so if you're interested on how to get out, I highly recommend that you talk to your local boss reps. Um, boss is a program that changed my life as well as many others. It's you know what introduced me to a lot of my now hobbies, whether it's skydiving, scuba diving, uh, I did my first bungee jump with them. I learned how to become a, a whitewater raft guide uh, through the program. So I highly encourage that you know reach out to your boss reps or reach out to your local boss president and learn about what boss has to offer. Or you know if you don't even know where to start, you can always shoot us a message. We can be found uh, by Army MWR Boss on almost every single social media platform. You can reach out and ask questions there. That's awesome. That's awesome to hear. Well, Sergeant, 
thank you so much. And I just want on behalf of myself and the exchange, thank you so much for your service. Um, thank you so much for everything you've done. Thank you for being a drill sergeant. Um, I always think it's great. Like I said, I'm a generation removed and I am so proud of this generation and you guys moving the flag and marching forward uh, and taking, uh, taking over where we left off. So I couldn't be more proud of you. Keep pushing, keep doing all the great things, keep gaming. And uh, I don't think this is the last time we've seen you on the show. So I can't wait to get you, uh, get you uh, on some multiplayer action. So um, thank you so much. And uh, until next time, it's been Exchange Games Live. I'm Mark Matthews. We'll see you next time. Bye.